In his uh, remarks yesterday, the president tried to deflect, which is a well-worn political ruse. So instead of talking about how this whole thing was so screwed up, he said, my policy is right. We had to get the deuce out of there. So don't blame me. Blame everybody else. Afghan army, Trump, White House chef. Not me. I got us out of there and we had to get, we had to get out. That's called deflection because you can get out without having people die and be enslaved and totally ignores a residual force at Bagram, all right, to make sure that the withdrawal was orderly. That's not a hard thing to do. Totally ignored it. Okay. So the press now is in a bad place. They threw everything they had to elect Joe Biden. They got a catastrophe at the southern border. They got higher prices for gas and food. They got Afghanistan. And the man looks befuddled because he is a diminished man. There's no doubt about it. He's diminished. I'm not going to speculate about why or how. He's just diminished. Okay, so yesterday, um, he now has shifted from this disastrous situation to, hey, we're doing the right thing by evacuating everybody and, and we're focused on the now. Now, this is what we're doing. We're going to get everybody out of there. Not we screwed up, as we proved yesterday, because I ran a soundbite of Biden in July going, oh, no, no, Afghanistan's not going to fall. He said it. Okay? But now it's, ah, we plan for all contingencies. Oh, come on. Come on. All right. So most Americans aren't buying any of this. And the polling shows it. Right now, Joe Biden is at Camp David. He went back. They didn't take any questions yesterday. Should have taken them. Didn't. There's a reason why he didn't take any questions. His people said, he's not going to be able to answer. Okay? And they trotted out Jake Sullivan today. I'll get to him in a minute. The National Security Advisor to take the questions. But it was the same kind of uh, three-card Monty, move it around, never admitting a mistake. Biden didn't mean one mistake. He said, oh, well, we were a little caught by surprise. But no, he didn't make any mistakes. And Sullivan today said, ah, no, we didn't make any mistakes. Okay, so um, Biden's going to be at Camp David through Wednesday, August 18th, trying to figure out how to save him. That's why they're at Camp David. How do we save them? Because after seven months, it's bleak. And the polling is bleaker. So Trafalgar Group, 1,084 respondents. Very simple question. What best describes how you feel about how President Biden is handling U.S. military options in Afghanistan? Disapprove 70%. And 48% of those 70 are Democrats. That's a colossal failure. Only 23% approve, and they all work for MSNBC. Okay, so 70 disapprove, 23 approve. That is, this is why they're at Camp David going, holy you know what, how are we going to get out of this? Um, Then a morning console poll, which is a left-wing poll, 40 Democrat, 35 Republican, do you approve or disapprove of how President Biden is handling Afghanistan? Approve 31, disapprove 51, no opinion 18. Come on, no opinion, really? So 51, 31 on a left wing poll. So the Biden administration had to do something today after nobody bought Biden yesterday. Oh, and ah, you know, we thought this might happen when he said less than 30 days ago, it's never going to happen. It's crazy. So they tried out this guy, Jake Sullivan. I don't know him. He's slick. All right. He's the national security advisor. And he uses words like hot wash. When he first said that, I went, is he saying that the Biden policy is hogwash? No, no. Hot wash. Whatever the deuce that means. You know, he's one of those guys at the end of the day, 15 times. You know, he's talking in. Biden speak, rehearse speak. Here's the key soundbite. Go. Uh, We were clear-eyed going in when we made this decision that it was 
possible that the Taliban would end up in control of Afghanistan. We were clear-eyed about that. Now, as the President said in his remarks yesterday, we did not anticipate that it would happen at this speed, though we were planning for these potential contingencies. Clear-eyed. Okay. So, you just got to step back for a moment. This is a national security advisor, the top guy. So if you think that the Taliban is going to take over and abuse women and cut people's heads off and execute at will and harbor Al Qaeda and let ISIS prisoners, thousands of them go. If you're if you're clear eyed on all that, you don't do any mitigating stuff at all. You don't keep a residual force at Bagram to prevent the thousand ISIS from getting out. You don't do anything. You don't start quietly evacuating people. You, you just let it go in three days. So they, basically, if you if you brush aside the BS and that's not easy to do because this guy, he was on camera almost an hour today and it was all BS. Oh, we're focused on this. We got a hot wash over here. Uh, you know, it's like, what are you talking about? If you know a humanitarian disaster will unfold, you try to prevent it. Now, that doesn't mean sending thousands of troops back. I wouldn't have done that. But if the Biden administration had any skill set at all, which it does not, they would have kept. 3,000 special forces in Bagram and U.S. contractors to service the air, the planes, and used air power to blunt the Taliban's progress while evacuating and getting our equipment. Do you know how much equipment, U.S. equipment, the Taliban captured? So were you clear-eyed on that, Jake? This is just... For people who are sophisticated, who know the world, who know how diminished Biden is, and I'm not saying this with any ideology. I did not vote for the man. You know that, okay? I didn't think he was going to be competent. He opposed the bin Laden raid. I mean, Gates, the former Secretary of State, said Biden's been on the wrong side of every single foreign policy decision in his entire career. And not only that, he's disingenuous, right? In 2002, he was the head of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee. He went to Afghanistan, Biden did. And here's what he said, go. It seems to me we have to bring some stability here by a multinational force uh, that is able, allows the government to be in a position to be able to exercise some authority. But we're just, this, this is pretty early in the process. And, uh, and so, uh, you know, I think you're going to see some glitches between here and there. So he was for nation building. He wanted it. Did you hear that in his speech yesterday? Did he say, well, I was wrong in 2002 trying to build a democratic nation out of a tribal society, which is never going to work. And those of us who understand Afghanistan know that. But you don't allow a foreign policy catastrophe. You don't allow it. He did on his watch. And now our main enemies in the world, China, Taiwan, you don't think China's going, hmm, Taiwan, we want that. What's Biden gonna do? Russia, hmm, Ukraine, we want that. What's Biden gonna do? And Iran going, hey, we're gonna get that nuke because he's not gonna stop us. Right? And if that China-Taiwan thing heats up, Biden's going to have to fight them. He's going to have to. And that's a world war. That's how weakened he is. He'd have to. He couldn't allow China to invade Taiwan. Take it. Because there's no clear-eyed on that. Contingencies. They don't have any contingencies. I mean, it's just a lie. They didn't think it was going to happen. Biden didn't think it was going to happen. And it did. And he won't tell the truth. Hey, I'm sure you've noticed that everything is getting more expensive. And with all this printing money and spending by the progressives, 
I'm concerned the dollar's end could be near. If the government continues this way, the dollar could freefall and lose its coveted role as the world's reserve currency. That's why there's never been a more important time to consider gold and silver to protect you and your family. And American Hartford Gold is the only company I'm happy to put my name behind. I have done business with them myself. It just takes a quick phone call and they'll have physical gold and silver delivered right to your door or put inside your IRA. Plus, tell them Bill O'Reilly sent you and they'll give you up to $2,500 of free silver on your first order. So please don't wait. Call 866-501-5201, 866-501-5201, or text Bill to 65532. Again, 866-501-5201, or text Bill to 65532. Bill O'Reilly here. Thank you for watching this video and make sure you subscribe to the First TV YouTube page. Just hit the big red subscribe button below and you'll get clips and highlights of my program, The No Spin News, every single day. We'll see you soon.